Most people decide they like your video before you even say a word. That's where color grading comes in. I gave myself a challenge to learn how to color grade. I don't mean throwing a cinematic LUT color grade, I mean really understand it. I bought my first real camera, the Sony ZV-10. Thought it would make me a real YouTuber. Spoiler alert, it didn't. My videos still look like potatoes. potato -y. So I dove in. I felt a lot. But I learned a few tricks and had one big breakthrough. And in the end, I learned how to make my videos look less potato-y. Also, color grading tutorials are confusing as hell. Let me try to fix that. First lesson, you can't color grade what isn't there. If your image is blown out or too dark, there's no fixing that. So I learned how to light my scene, three-point lighting, key light, soft light, backlight, all kinds of light. But that's a video for another day. Once I had footage that didn't suck, I binge watched every YouTube tutorial that said cinematic or filmic. You know, I wanted that orange and teal look, that filmic saturation, that slow-mo cinematic shot of a record player on a bookshelf. And that's when I realized it's not about finding the right way. It's about finding what works for you. Forget the orange and teal. I just wanted my clips not look like a potato. I wanted my footage to look clean, balanced, and me. That was my breakthrough. So here's my non-colors approved workflow that works for me. All right, I got some fresh footage on the timeline. I got a dumb look on my face. So first thing we're gonna do is Gerber node and hit Alt S and just add a bunch of notes. First thing I always do is add noise reduction because I'm still kind of crappy with my camera. I'm gonna come down here to the spatial noise, hit AI, Ultra and R. I think this is studio only and I'm just gonna hit analyze. Next. I shot an S-Log, so we got to convert it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. I have a bunch of presets here, so I'm just going to grab this here, drop it on, and it turns this node into a CST or color space transform. Next, you want to set your white balance or your black balance. I'm going to do that with these little crosshairs down here. You can also use the eyedropper, but I just like these better. But before we do that, first we're gonna go to our gamma and we're gonna set it to linear. Don't ask me what that does, but it's supposed to be the pro way of doing this and it seems to work really well. Also gonna go into the key and we're gonna change the key output to 0.5. Now I didn't hold up anything white. I don't have one of those color checkers, so I'm gonna try to do it with the black balance. Black balance seems to give varying results sometimes. So I'm gonna click my little leg here at my desk and that doesn't seem too bad. Okay, we can get rid of that now. Next node, this is where you would kind of spread out your waveform usually. Some people say you want your color information to be spread out across this parade scope. I don't think that's completely necessary. I don't think it's a bad thing to do, but my shadows are pretty low. Looks like I'm clipping on my black, which means the absolute darkest part of my picture are hitting the zero. So I'm just going to raise up my shadows with this lift primary color wheel. Uh, that doesn't look too bad. Which is completely destroying my black balance, but it'll be okay. We'll get there. And then I can raise my gain a little bit and my midtones and apparently your skin tones are supposed to be between 40 and 70. Looks like I'm doing okay there. All right, next, I'm going to come into this next node, right click it. I'm going to color space. I'm going to change it to HSV. This is going to be my saturation node. Apparently, this is how you get filmic saturation. Turn off channel one, right click again, turn off channel three. And now, basically, your gain, gamma, and lift will increase the saturation in each of those channels without increasing your luminance or not increase or it only increases your luminance i don't know but this is supposed to be a really good way to get saturation again not a colorist so we'll probably just bump up the shadows a little you got to be careful because this will really break your image definitely don't want to go too crazy with it i usually leave the mid-tones alone but we'll bump it up just a little now the next one's going to be my contrast we'll select that node come into the color curves and we're just going to Pull it down until I get something that I think looks cool. That's not bad. Now this node is going to be my CST out, if you will, my color space transform into Rec 709. Rec 709 is what YouTube, TV, that's the color space that it's all done in. So we got to bring it out of DaVinci by gamut into Rec 709. So bring up my gallery, my power grade, and find the DaVinci wide gamut to Rec 709. 
All right, hey, that looks pretty good. I think I might have went a little too crazy with my saturation, so we'll bump it back now. Maybe two, something like that. I think we'll reset that completely. So far, so good. So like my skin tones are still all between 70 and 40. All right, now this node is usually where I'm gonna put my LUT and it doesn't always work with your colors, but it is something you'll have to try. So let's see, I really like these Film Noir. Uh, we're in Rec. 709, so I'm gonna use Rec. 709 LUT. That's pretty cool, I like that. That one's not bad, it's a little bit green though. That one's cool. Let's see. Let's do that one. We'll drop that one on this node. All right, now this is where I'm gonna add my halation. Cool, looking pretty good. I need three more nodes. Right now I'm gonna add sharpening. Sometimes this looks good, sometimes it looks terrible. It's always way too strong though, see? And we'll just turn it down like 1.5 or something. It looks pretty good. Next, we'll add my film grain. You can do this with a film look creator if you have studio. I don't like the film look creator, I don't know. Probably just don't know how to use it. All right, we'll just turn the size down. Maybe turn the texture down. I think it looks pretty good. Now we'll come to this last node and we'll just bump up the highlights towards the red to get that orange and teal look everybody wants. And then the shadows go towards the teal, something like that. Let's get rid of this gallery so we can really see it fit. All right, it looks pretty good. What's my skin tones look like? All right, if you really want to check your skin tones, come down here change this to the vector scope and that's your skin tone line so all your skin tone should pretty much fall on your line and i must have did a pretty good job because this doesn't really need balancing looks like it's all around my skin tones it is a little bit high on the red so we can take care of that with this offset so what i like to do is find black or white in the picture and just make sure it's centered That'll also help with your skin tones. Look, white is pretty spot on. Black is pretty spot on. There you go. There's my color grading process. Real quick, why I got you here, if you really want cinematic footage, it's all about audio. And you can save 70% with my link and code SAVE70 at audio.com. Go check them out. It helps the channel out. Appreciate you. And back to the video. Is it the right way? Probably not. Would it make a real color throw up? Most likely, but it works for me and that's what matters. Color grading taught me something more important than just how to make my footage look nice. It taught me I don't need to copy a film to make my videos look pro. Now when I'm shooting, I'm not stressing about how my next video won't look like a Netflix documentary. I just want to make stuff that looks good and doesn't scream potato. If you've ever struggled with color grading, comment down below your biggest struggle. I might have a resource or a tutorial most likely a dumb joke, but let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.